What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Dev back again for another. for a final final thoughts video. Final thoughts, but actually a re listen. Um, I decided, man, you know, with all of the craze and all of the buzz and just the enjoyment and the positive feedback, with some negative feedback on Utopia, uh, the long awaited Utopia finally dropped this past Friday. And um, I think personally, man, I think Travis Scott did not disappoint at all. Uh, I think that from, you know, just an artistic standpoint, you know, Travis definitely did his thing. Uh, he did not disappoint. He delivered on every level. Um, the creativity was there. The beats were there. The features all, as always were there. Uh, Utopia definitely felt like a different type of experience. Uh, exactly what I thought when I first listened to it. Like again, I said, space cartel. Mexican Space Cartel music. I did, I did, did. The only thing I, I was disappointed about was there was not Donnie um, to not basically have a lot of the Cactus Jack members kind of on this album. I thought that was kind of like, uh, you know, especially Don Tolliver, who's had an amazing past two years. You know, I thought he would at least have one song for as much features they've done together. But I'm assuming, I'm assuming that they will probably have some sort of collab tape moving forward. Uh, that was the only thing really complained I had about it. Other than that, though, man, I love tracks. A lot of variety on the album, you know, going from um, to, uh, not telekinesis, K-pop to uh, Echoes with uh, Beyonce, Del Resto. Um, I didn't hear the Del Resto part, though. Like, did she say Del Resto? I always hear Echoes, but maybe Del Resto means Echoes in Spanish. If you guys can give me a little um, education right there. And then there's a lot of tracks that are, you know, are very catchy and funny, like God's Country is a very kind of catchy track that's different. Um, My Eyes also a very different track. You know, you got the very kind of psychedelic tracks with, um, I'm trying to think it's called, um, why, why? Paracel. Well, there we go. Paracel. Uh, My Eyes is also another kind of psychedelic, very kind of high voice pitch, different tune, singing voice from Travis Scott. You know, um very drum influence very yeezus influence a lot of people would say i think i actually want to make a different video about that we're probably about to talk about that after but um a lot of uh yeezus influence man very greediness on hyena um what was the other track that was like that uh that uh, can't think about i think it was either circus maximus or sirens was it Modern Jam. I know Modern Jam was a track that that gave that kind of like old, you know, 80s with the Madonna vibe. I felt like it. My Eyes, it talks about uh, Kylie Cheen. My Eyes is uh, the track I want to talk about, um, too. There's a lot of stuff that he actually mentioned in that track, too. That was crazy. Hassan, what's up, man? Um, we are in the Discord. If you guys want to join the Discord, for whoever has the Discords, you guys can join. We're about to start that. But uh, I just want to kind of do like a quick re-listen, re-skim towards the album because there's a lot of things that I've noticed that I didn't like at first um, that I now kind of just appreciate about the album. So, Utopia versus Astro or versus Rodeo. I I can make a different video about that as well, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're so, man, as you, go, as you guys know, man, we get to track one man right here, and it is literally um, Hyena, which I feel like was just a great intro all around. Uh, very grittiness from Travis Scott. I feel like it kind of it kind of set the tone. Hold on, I'm in Brody Platinum. Okay, hold on. All right, there we go. It kind of set the tone for the album, and I feel like it was like the greediness of it. Uh, I think this is kind of the part where everybody thought that the album was going to be more of like a Yeezus feel uh, than anything. They could kind of hear the drums. We knew that was going to go in a different direction because Travis, when he said previously that the album was going to sound more like a Owl Pharaoh mixed with a Days Before Rodeo. And so we're getting this kind of sound here going. 
a lot of instrumentation going here, a lot of drums, a lot of snares, like a lot of bass. And I thought that this was a pretty decent intro. Like, you know, I think this is a great intro for how the album has set the tone for what the album was going to be. And I like this track too, you know, like I think, you know, you hear shit like this right here. Again, definitely more closer to the Hour of Feral days than anything that Travis has done on his last four projects. Uh, there hasn't really been too much of this, anything like this. And again, I don't like the people like to say that the Yeezus, the Yeezus influence, but everybody got to remember, man, I know uh, this is kind of contradicting myself with the rule, but Travis was around when Yeezus, Cruel Summer, I did mention Cruel Summer in the video, when he was around when those projects were being made, he was around that camp, he was helping produce that, he was help creating that sound, and I always do preach it's not about who does it first, it's about who does it best, alright, that's how influence works, and so... I do agree with that. I'm just saying that in this case, it's an exception because Travis was a part of the creation. You know what I'm saying? Like he was also wearing Crocs with the Croc maker, if that kind of makes sense. You know, I remember I always tell you, like if Kanye wears Crocs, he's the influence. I'm not the influence because I'm wearing Crocs first, but Kanye did it best. So that's how I feel about that, man. Hyena's a great track though, man. Like I think the beat breakdown right here, the beat down right here, the, 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 the boom, boom. I think that track is fire, man. How y'all feel about that? Subs. Subs, how do y'all how do y'all feel about that first track? Like it, like what is y'all opinion on that first track? It, it set the tone. It was like you're going to hell. Is that what like, so that's y'all y'all felt it was going to hell? Well, that's what it said in the beginning. <laughs> I didn't feel like it was more of a hell. I felt like we were definitely going on a darker side or a darker route. But I didn't feel like we were going towards a hell. I definitely thought that we were going on a journey. You know, no, like, but the, the track, it says, like, hell, hell, hell. It repeats it, like, five times. So you thought, so you thought from, that, from that statement there that we were going to hell? <laughs> Pretty much. That's how you were feeling when we were first going here. Like it says, Uto if Utopia is a place in, like, hell or something. He said hell, H-A-I-L, like, hell. Oh. Okay, that's what it, hell. Like, all hell, the king, right? <laughs> like, a, like hey, hell. like I said, don't say your names because I don't want y'all. I take all the bunt. You know, they can call me Dev and and whatever. I don't want y'all to be y'all names to be out there and, and to say shit. Just just don't say y'all names. But um, I hell, listen, I'm not gonna lie. The conspiracy shit is definitely gonna be talked about here too because I feel like the conspiracy shit was crazy. Um, and there was a lot of times where he was, especially in like my eyes, where he acknowledged it, and then there was times in the album like on meltdown where he acknowledged it uh kind of contradicting everything that he said in my eyes essentially there's also another track too i feel like oh paracel i had a big theory with paracel that i'm going to talk about when we get there to make sure you're reminding me then we hop into the second track though i feel like we're already one for one with hyena i don't know why it's spelled like that but maybe you guys know more than me and then we get to track two which i feel like is a top five on the album i think we all can agree on that right you guys feel that way uh thank god is a top five well my top five. I don't know what y'all top five. Y'all can talk at any time too. I don't care if y'all talk. Nah, um, it's in my top five. It's in your yeah, top five. I, I, I mean, I think I think honestly, it should have been an intro. To be honest, you think yeah. that should have been the intro? Nah, yeah, I think yeah. that Eno's a good intro because it like is different from yeah, yeah. It sets the standards for what the album is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I, def I definitely don't see Thank God as an intro song because I feel like Thank God has a lot of substance in it and shouldn't be an intro. I feel like intro songs should never have switch ups. That's my opinion. I know I know a lot of y'all love two scan leather, Tuscan leather, two scan, two scan, whatever y'all want to call it. But I know y'all love that shit. But having four intros in a song, it, I mean having four transitions in an intro, I just think is is not it at all. I just think this. What are you saying like, about Tuscan leather? You don't uh you're not fucking with it as an intro? I, oh I love I I love Tuscan leather. I'm just saying though, like it's just it just that Tuscan leather could have been track five. Okay. You know, like, what will you put it on from that album? Like what will you put as an intro? Whoa, 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 whoa. We are, we are, we're getting off we're topic. We're on a raw we topic. topic. Yeah, All right, so, we're, we're, so now no, 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 we're we on track two, man. Thank God. So I can't be talking to y'all. Thank God. Be off track. So then we get to thank God, man. I think thank God is just an amazing track overall, man. I love the build up to the track. Obviously, it has my favorite ad lib in there. Muchos gracias. You know, has that shit in there. That shit's crazy. And then um, and then we get to the, I, I say obviously a lot, so don't worry about it. But we get to the switch up. I think my favorite part of the song is when it did the switch up. And then it did two switch ups actually. It did so like the the beat was very climatic. All right, I think that's the right word. We had a, a, a basically a, a rise in the beat, 
and we're going into it. And I'm just, you know, you, when you're so immersed in a song, that's how beat switches get you. So you get to the, to, you're literally immersed in the song, and you listen to the song, and it's, and it's getting ready for this big buildup. And then, and then you hear the Travis Scott scream, which I think is insane. You hear the Travis Scott scream. And, I, and then at this part, this one, I'm just literally like, even in my car, because in the car, the car experience is way different. From the, the, some of the tracks that I did not like when my first listen, not saying I didn't like it, but was kind of just like, hmm, maybe. In the car changed that whole perspective. And it was literally just like, yo, when this shit drops. Still no pressure. Thank God I breathe. Cause shit I speak. Is what I feel they... like Travis Scott's track twos have been insane on all his albums, if you really think about it. If you really go back to all his albums, his track twos have been, his follow-up tracks to the intros have all been insane. And, and no so lies, you get here, lies, still up top, and, still and then I, th and I thought this part right here, the beat dropped, went into the uh, that little sound right there, and then it came back in, had Stormy as an ad-lib. I thought that was a, a nice touch on it, gave it a very nice subtle touch. I think Thank God was probably the one of the most well-produced tracks on the album, and it definitely felt very, my, my idea of Utopia, when I first thought of it, was going to be a very spacey vibe uh a, a kind of like out of body experience an experience not an actual utopia because by definition i was like how is he going to put that into you know how is he going to put that that word by definition into into actual music i just it just didn't make sense to me but more of the feeling of hey we were in astral world and now we're going to utopia uh which is basically to the next level so you know i thought this was right here and then he had stories part on here which is crazy can short my stock, I still stack tall, you still can't trade me. Storms are minor, but you know she living major. When you flying up the side, ain't no cables. And I thought like I thought that part right there was just amazing to me, man. Y'all know how I feel with the switch ups and shit. I get a little alcohol on me, that shit's crazy. So we all agree that's top five, right? Y'all, I mean, I'm not trying to sway y'all in any way. If you guys have not any, it's not top five for you. Nah, okay? it's top five for me. For you, so if you have, it's any, top five. It's top five. Top five has to be. Okay. It's a good song, bro. bro when those violins come in, yeah, the switch up is a big deal. It's a big deal. Mandem Chris in here. I mean, Mandem. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I'm saying your name. All <laughs> oh man, hey mate, look from f one fellow England man to another fellow England fam. You know, I just you know it's, it's tough out here, right? You know, talking to the Americans, fam, they don't really know the lingo like that. You know. Yeah, nah, it's it's okay. It's okay. Okay, you know. <laughs> It's crazy, fam, yo. Uh, but no, nah, uh, yeah, I think you so. So you said, "Thank God's not in your top five. Why do you not? Why do you think "Thank God's not in your top five? Like, what, what's wrong with "Thank God" for it to not be a top five track? Nothing's so, wrong with it. Up. <laughs> like you, so uh, you, I just, I think they're. I like the album, and I, for me, I just enjoy other songs more than, than that. Like, it's a good song. Okay, so you so it's just not in your top five, but it's a good song. Okay, I can I can respect yeah. that. I can respect that. Mm -hmm. And then we get to track three, Modern Jam, which a lot of people actually said that they didn't like, which I was very confused. I mean, I'm understanding hip hop Twitter. You know, hip hop Twitter is what it is, what it is. And you know, if you're not inside in, in, in that type of scene, or you've never listened to that type of music, or you're just not with that, I, I fuck with I fuck with Modern Jam. I definitely feel like the second half is better than the first half. Uh, I love the drop in the, um, when a, when a, when the when the lady starts singing and she starts doing her thing. Our our, our Tizo is that just Tizo singing? Yeah, that's just Tizo. Okay. Tizo yeah. No, I'm See, saying, but this part right here, like I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about this part right here. Is that Tizo? That's I don't I don't you sure that's Tizo? Okay, well it definitely sounded like I know I know Tizo's a guy. Come on now, but I'm saying it definitely sounded like it was a uh, some type of different artist or a singer that maybe wasn't mentioned in there. But I thought that uh, yes, 100% Tizo. Okay, so I thought this. Was, so I thought that was like the best part of the song. That definitely for sure gave it kind of an 80s vibe and i thought that that was pretty cool man like i thought the track was a modern jam <laughs> like, i thought that was the best way to put it because um whenever you think about that song like that reminds me of like um there was a skit in the love below that uh, andre 3000 did and he um he used to do like ta ta you know like the english people you know ta ta say hi de ho you know like shit like that like that old kind of like wig wearing kind of people i don't know what the hell you talk about it but, like what you call them but um, George Washington motherfuckers, you feel me? 
And I think that that's kind of what it gave it. If it gave it gave that sound, and then it kind of brought it into a modern jam. I know that's kind of probably pushing it and think about it, but I mean that's just how I felt towards me. Again, I love people like Blood Orange. You know, I love artists that kind of do that indie shit and shit. So for me, it was like right down my alley. So um, how'd y'all feel about that? Y'all like that track or? Yeah, you know, Blood Orange could have been a good feature on that track. You know, on this track. I definitely that that that's crazy too because that, we were talking about that in part, my group chat and we were literally saying like part, Blood Orange would have been fucking insane. Yeah, uh, that first part didn't suit Travis at all, really, to me. I he, thought Tizo was Andre. You thought Tizo was Andre? Nah, I, I know what? Andre's voice, so I definitely didn't think that was. No, on, was on first listen, on first listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, even then, I didn't think that was. was like, Dead said it gave it, it gave Winston Churchill vibes. <laughs> Is this anybody's top five? Like, oh man. Nah, top five's crazy. Definitely it's not in my top five for sure. No, I was asking because I'm wondering, you know. Uh, but it's a good song. It is a great song. Yeah. Like, period. Like again, again, I'm just using you guys because I want to see. Uh, look, when everybody always says I'm talking, everybody always likes to say that I'm talking just from my perspective, or I'm talking from like whatever, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, well, let's just start asking the people then. Like, if they if if they feel the same way, they feel the same way. And obviously, you guys said so. You guys like this track. That's all I need. You guys like the track? Yes or no? Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Okay, so it's not a bad track. That's all I like. It's not a bad track. Okay, so we get to Modern Jam, which I'm at this point. I'm three for three. Uh, yes, bro, top five. I'm gonna own that shit. Okay, nothing wrong with that, Jace. For real, if you like that, there's nothing wrong to like that shit. I mean, with this 100% respect, but a Kanye feature on any of these tracks would have made it worse. Uh, made it the worst track in the album. Nah, I think I think Tizo was a great feature on here. Like I said, Blood Orange would have been cool on there too. I had a couple other artists. And then we get to My Eyes. Now, My Eyes was probably the first track I got to that was really controversial for me. I was really kind of just um, wondering if this is Frank Ocean. Like, where's he going with this? Is this going to be like a Osh Gosh Bagosh Gerber music? Like, what, what are we going to do here? Like, wh wh why is he sounding like this? Is this going to be a new thing that he's trying? Maybe he's been hanging out with Playboy Voldemort too much. Who knows? But then, like, if you hear the message in the song, there's... Uh, as you guys said that, you know, he talks about um, Kylie cheating on him, which I didn't uh, I didn't I didn't hear that one. But maybe you guys can can, can guide me there. But I definitely heard when he was, um, you know, acknowledging the, the tragedy that happened. And you guys already know how I feel about the Astro World situation. One hundred percent. And I stand by that. And I just definitely feel like it's crazy because a man that was on his high horse, who was at the top of his career, uh, essentially getting stomped down and brought down by the masses and it just wasn't fair to him at all and i think that you know they tried to put those deaths even yeah, to this day you said what what is that can you hear chris you're you're breaking up bro. i couldn't hear uh I, he, he 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 disconnected but like i just to put the um to put that on is to put that on him. I think that is kind of crazy, and I think that uh, you know he was definitely he loves his fans. If one thing that Travis Scott has always shown is is love for his fans, and you know um, the way he does it in, in his raging ways, and, and and you know just the support he does it, and to just bring great music to his fans, he's always loved his fans. You know, um, bringing his fans on stage, jumping in the moshes, all that, and you know I truly definitely feel like it had an impact on him, especially when people were essentially betraying him saying that it was his fault and that he did all that, you know, and he wanted that. And they called him a warlock, and he, which he acknowledges later on in the album, you know, like saying that he's a mug and, you know, <laughs> doing seances and shit. And, you know, it's crazy. Um, yeah, we get to my eyes. Let, I'll let it play for a little bit. I thought it was a very kind of lullaby-ish beat and very, like... One thousand on my feet, stacks put it on my seat. Ten thousand on my eyes, roly poly on my wrist. Gotta make a flight, big day, slumming no FaceTime. Fifty K, wonder why I'm storming off, no race. Emboldened by the bliss, I was sworn in by a kiss. Then I'm a cupid creep, then sleep with armor. Three times and gave me teen, teen, teen. Still same phone, eighteen, teen, teen. Still getting news very vividly. Beef in that fucking beef. And then this song's fire slow too. Like I actually slept on a lot of the album that was slowed. We will play this song slow for you guys because I will not miss it this time, man. But we this song slow was crazy. I'm I'm gonna play it slow too for y'all too. Like we don't want to miss out. Um, I think this song right here slow was uh. 
Travis Scott, um, My Eyes. I think that it sounds actually way better slow. I think the highlight of this track, though, for sure, that everybody could, could agree on is, um, hold on. Hey, Chris, you got to, you got to, there you go. I brought you back in. I think your mic, like, disconnected or some shit. Um, but I think that this, this, uh, Sanfa was the highlight of this song. Like, seeing Sanfa just come out, even though he only had, like, one, one line. I wish it was longer. Yeah, exactly. Everybody wish it was longer because Sanfa has been out, you know, you know, he's been doing his thing, taking his little break. And, yeah, so I think that this track was crazy, man. This track was crazy slow. I love this gif. I love this gif in the background, so I don't know if you guys see this gif. Right here, like, this gif is crazy. I don't know what anime that is, but that's, that's crazy. I think the beat switch, too, is amazing, too, like. The transition is slow. It's crazy. Right there. A lot of the slower songs reminded me of Cuddy. I thought the yeah, I thought the switch up was crazy. Like, my eyes, tell me you tell do you see the road and match my soul and tell me the size whenever the smoke clear out of my face and my picture perfect and do I look fried? All of that green and yellow that drew your eyes is telling tell you the minds I'm with to my side to push back the ceiling and push back the feelings I had to the side. I replay them nights and wipe on my side. All I see is the sea of people that round me if they just knew what Scotty would do to jump out the stage and say I'm a child of these are You see what he said, like I thought that right there was the most heartfelt thing because I listened to it slow in the car. And so when I heard that line, I was like, man, like he really kind of, you know, the best way for an artist to express himself is always through music. And so when he kind of acknowledged that saying that, hey, man, I wish I could have, um, you know, like I, if, if they knew Scotty would ju have jumped in, try to save those kids, if he would have knew he would have did what he could. And I think that's a lot of what a lot of people don't really understand, man. Like, that's the part that upsets me so much is we all have opinions in this world. And I don't care. I don't, these days, I don't care to really be the bad guy. I'm old enough now to not give a fuck. I'm also way older than you guys. And I'm a truly I truly just, you know, I'm, I'm in tune with who I am and myself. And, you know, I'm going to live with, with my what my conviction. I'm going to live with my words. And, you know, because that's what I'm going to I'm gonna die who I am. And I feel like. When it, when it comes to a lot of people hold their tongues because they don't want to, you know, either get canceled or they're just scared. They don't want to be looked at different when some some shit needs to just be said. And, and it's, it's crazy how you would just expect one man to just be there and 80,000 people in attendance. I think there was 60,000 people in attendance, but apparently a lot of people broke the gates. So they were just trying to go from domino domino effect from like maybe if he didn't maybe if he didn't tell people to rage, no one then nobody would have died. Maybe if he didn't make rage music in the first place, no one would have died. Maybe if Travis Scott wasn't born in the first place and the music wasn't made, then they wouldn't be able to rage and then they wouldn't have died in the first place. You see how like the hey, domino effect hey, goes uh, down? <laughs> Sorry to cut you, Dev. Yeah, but let's talk about what Woodstock, bro. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh, for sure. People uh, should uh, check that out. Bro, before they start really saying and, things and, and 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 like a lot of people like to misuse words and text and when it comes down to it and it's really like oh so you're saying those kids deserve to die and i'm just like bro look man look i'm a smart guy all right and i've seen these festivals right and mm -hmm. first of all i don't think kids should be in those festivals period when i've saw when i saw those kids in the festivals that's a crazy that's Nine one old, you know. that's nah. one two we just watch amp and your rage them literally going rolling loud miami for for, for playboy cardi and go into the mosh pits all right, like you're asking for some bad shit to possibly happen. You're increasing your risk of something bad to happen. All right, there's only so much people can do with a mass mob, period. And so, like, if you're gonna go in, it's like it's like saying you got claustrophobia. You're claustrophobic, and then I'm a, like I'm gonna go mosh, but then if I if I'm if I'm dying, somebody save me. Or are you expecting twenty five thousand other humans? To 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 not you know survive for themselves. I've been in some shit like that. I, I will never forget. I did it one time. I was at um, the 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 first time that uh, I was in D.C. The time that the uh, the Nationals won the Stanley Cup, and I will tell you, I bullshit you not, bro. From three streets of D.C. were filled with people, 
and people were literally dying. I literally had a girl come up to me. I was blocking the girl. I'm literally at the window blocking her. I have a video of it too. It was crazy. And I met a subscriber too. This is a funny thing. Maybe he's in my chat. But I met a subscriber. He was like, yo, Miami, I'm a big fan of you, bro. As we're dying. I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro, we're big fan. And the girl's literally just like, oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you. She's literally almost having a heart attack. Because she can't handle being pushed around, and then she's 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 panicking. The one thing you're not supposed to ever do is panic, and she's panicking, and she can't get out, and she feels trapped. She probably had a little bit of claustro mild claustrophobia or claustrophobicness, and she didn't know, and she's literally just. So I'm literally blocking her, my little ass thing. I'm only five eight. I'm blocking her ass, and you know she gives me a hug after. I'm you know I'm I'm kind of mad because at the time I want listen. Whenever I meet people in real life, everybody in your life has the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Uh, did I say the Nationals? My bad. The Capitals. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, but everybody in your life has a purpose, all right? So whenever I meet somebody, even if I have a conversation with them, if I have a major moment with them, I always want to add them on Instagram because it sucks. Imagine a year down the line, you know, you met somebody in person at a bar and they gave you a whole testimony about their life and now you can't ever hit them back. That's why social media was created. It's an amazing thing. That's one of the amazing things about social media. So I'm blocking this girl. This girl gives me a big hug. and She's like, I thank you so much. You're so sweet. You're such a true gentleman and all that. And as wild as it is to say, because if I said that I wanted to get her number or her Instagram, y'all would have been like, damn, damn, you're trying to riz her up. Are you trying to just date her? Like, nah, man, we just had a moment where I protected this girl and we literally almost both died. And I feel like that's an experience that you should be able to, like, maybe one day come back to him. Like, yo, that was cool. Like, is, how is everything? Is, is life good? Well, that's great. You know, you have a good life. Everything's going good. I'm doing great as well. I'm doing a YouTuber. I'm, I'm doing great. You have a great life. You know, that's literally how I feel about meeting people in life because everybody you meet in life is for a purpose. They serve a role, whether it's minimal or whether it's maximum. All right. They, they serve a role in your life. You meet everyone in life for a reason. Period. Um, you said hockey ain't clogging the streets like that. It was it was literally their first Stanley Cup, bro. I mean, yeah, there's their first Stanley Cup. What do you mean they weren't lit like that? Nigga, that shit was lit. <laughs> um, uh, so so I know I got a little bit off topic though, and I wasn't reading the chat, but um, yeah, everybody literally at that at, at, like the reason I brought that up though is like it's you know you're bringing that up because no one cares when they're trying to survive. And it sucks that much as that sucks to say, bro. Like, I don't know what y'all wanted Travis Scott to do. Everybody's like, yo, Travis, like, he was supposed to stop the concert every five seconds because everybody's just moshing and dying. Like, there's there's only so much he could have done. I honestly just say get rid of the festivals altogether, in my opinion, if that's how you feel about it. That's the best way to get rid of all that, that thing and then just have everybody have a seated experience. Put seats there, and that's the maximum you can do, and everybody sit their ass down. That's the only way you can really kind of change that festival atmosphere. But festivals aren't going anywhere. So that's just literally what it was. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm just I'm just saying. So, uh, but that's just how I feel about that man. Uh, that was that I just wanted to bring that, that that up. But then we get to God's crunchy, God, God's crunchy, God's uh, country. Wait, how do y'all feel about my eyes? My eyes, good track, bad track. Anything bad to say about uh, it? It's my favorite track. I love it. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. One of your favorites. One of your favorites. Yeah, so, the second half. Definitely really good. Spoke a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it so it, it sounds like that track. It's not in my top five, but it sounds like that track hits you guys heavy. That track is a heavy heavy hitter for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I appreciate. No, I definitely appreciate that. I'm not mad at that at all. Um, um, if you like that track, again, we all like, that's what makes us human. We all love different tracks. I think that's the beauty of music, man. We all gonna love different tracks, and there's no there's nothing wrong with liking different tracks unless you like Playboy Cardi. Uh, then we get to track five, God's Country. And then God's Country, I felt like was a bad track when I first heard it. You guys remember when I did the video, I said that God's Country just wasn't hitting for me. Bro, in the whip, that, 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 that. Na, 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 na. In the whip, that <laughs> bitch go crazy. In the whip, whatever. <laughs> Yo, in the whip, bro, it, 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 it's like, it, it kind of is like a trance in a sense. Where it feels, um, it just feels so just slow and vibey. It's just like, ah, ah, ah. and I felt like maybe my speakers weren't really working that well for it. But like when I got in my Beamer, man, that shit was fucking going crazy. Like I was like, I just love the beat. I love the cadence. It kind of reminded me of, you know, like, cause I remember I told you guys when I did Rodeo, I did not like, um, Wasteland. Like I didn't, I didn't like that track too much. It's probably the one track I do skip on Rodeo all the time. I tell you guys. And, but I, I skip it, not because I hate it, but just because I, it just does, it, sometimes it does it for me, sometimes it doesn't. 
And I feel like this, God, vibe. yeah, this fun, this God's country though, man. This shit was, you know. Waking up, I see the light. I do feel like God's country would have been a better fit on Astro World, though, if you ask me, because it has a little bit of that carnival kind of circus feel to it, and I feel like that's why it would have been a better. Maybe it was a, a Astro World throwaway. Well, it was supposed to be on Kanye's unreleased album. It was supposed to be on Kanye's Donda. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense than if it was supposed to be there. But I think it should have been the Astro World track. Beamer, all right, rich guy. I'm definitely not rich. I'll tell you guys right now, I'm definitely not rich. I do not even have Spotify Premium. Um, and uh, uh, plus, I fell off. Uh, YB ratio, uh, you know, uh, uh, better learn Chinese, buddy, all that, whatever the memes you guys say, all that. Um, but yeah, I think okay. God's country. I think God's country. Is, you see, God's country is an interlude. I don't think it's an interlude more. So. I mean, it's a short track, but I think that it's just a. Um, it's just a very kind of slow beat. It's definitely meant to be listened to more in a chilled environment. It's not hype. And as soon as you kind of understand the ah, 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 that part is when it makes it a, a better track, at least to me. I the mean, vocal sample. Yeah, the vocal yeah. sample. Yeah, yeah, I thought that that shit was dope as fuck. Once you um, once it gets enhanced by a speaker system, because you know sometimes when you're listening to sounds through the speakers, if your speaker system isn't good, they like make it to the where like certain sounds only come out of good speakers, like certain little lows, lows and highs only come out through certain speakers. So if you don't have a good speaker system, you're not even getting that experience or that sound because it's not coming out of your speakers. Like with, I, which is crazy. I know that sounds crazy sound, but it is true. You know, like you know, you get the sound like they don't, they don't, you know, it sounds like it's coming from the left. Then it sounds like it's coming from the right. Then it sounds like it's coming from the left. Like they do shit like that. Um, you got Apple Music? Yeah, I do have Apple Music. Yeah. Uh, but track six is Sirens. Now, this is where everybody was talking about the easiest thing, and I've already explained it earlier. I think the the easiest. I'm not trying to give Travis an excuse. I'm just giving him a bit of a lead, you know, some leniency because, again, he did work on those sounds back in the day. Yes, Kanye made it popular. I'm just saying Travis was right there next to him, help, helping, kind of helping. So it's not like it was like more of like stealing the sounds. I would say it's more like he put that shit on layaway. You know, like, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the songs are older because um, it got came out that uh, the one with Kid Cudi is like, like almost ten years old. Really? Oh Who's yeah, that? I did hear that. Where'd y'all hear that from? Sources, bro. Trust me, I'm just playing. I heard that, but I never believed it because <laughs> I, like, I heard, I saw no source. No, know. there was a, there was a, there was a tweet from like 2014 or 2015, and it had uh, a video of the, the. Yeah, I had like a vine. Thing. It was like a vine. Uh, There's a vine about repost. it. Yeah, it was a vine repost. That's how old it was. Vine. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um. Okay, so then if you guys got it from. Um, Vine then But this song definitely grew on me heavy uh, Again I already love Yeezus And it felt like I, I mentioned it Because somebody also agreed with me in the comments I read a lot of the comments when I'm, um, when I'm strong I don't reply to a lot of them but I read them But I said that this sounds like coming to America If Travis if you're a rock star And somebody else Actually kind of agreed it sounds like a coming to America Kind of like Like if you guys haven't seen that movie It's an amazing movie And so like It does sound it. Look out. Again, uh, this track. Oh, this that, this yeah, this album is just so different from everything that he's done from his last, from Days Before Rodeo on. That's the difference. And it's because when he said it was going to sound like Al Pharoah, like he was not bullshitting. Like he was dead ass serious. Like this is what it's going to be. You said this is your top three. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that being your top three. Um... Not in my top three, but I, I mean, I, I'm not mad at that as well. Here's the vine. Okay, let's 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 listen to the vine. Wow, that's actually amazing. Holy shit! I always tell you guys, man, when y'all showing y'all dicks on and glizzies on the internet, bro. All right, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, bro. Digital footprints is for real life. That shit is. It will never leave you. But that's crazy. It's from 20, 000, 20, 2016. Wow. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these cuts were older and he's been mastering them until yeah. he released it. He's probably had to push back the album, which is an astral thing. 
That makes sense then. Yeah, I could definitely see him. And this and this is why I always say, like, when I have the Juice World conversation, you don't know what these artists wanted. At any moment, they could have changed their mind and be like, you know what? If this song came out 10 years ago, and if it were to sound different than what they wanted to sound, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's 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 a, uh, creative control is what somebody called it. Um, you know, you want to have a, cre- cre- you know, creators always want to have their own control of what they want to do. Um, so yeah, it's kind of crazy. That was, that was over seven years ago type shit. So, and then we get to basically everybody's, I would say favorite produced by Binks, um, meltdown, uh, uh, Drake feature, you know, who can go wrong with a Drake, Travis Scott. They've been doing it since, uh, I'm trying to think since the last time, if you're reading this is too late was the last time they did it together. I think that was the first time they did it. Uh, with company so they've been doing it for a while together now um you know i think that the beat is after you get over whispering drake over a little bit then this song is actually pretty dope like i I actually i loved it and this is the funny thing too when they said that uh this is where it was kind of funny because after what he said in my eyes um you you hear in my eyes how he's very you know heartfelt and, and and very regretful and and just very sad but at the same time, still understanding, like, yo, stop fucking with me, bro. Like, I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a warlock or wherever y'all think I am, bro. Like, stop talking that shit. He did it a couple times. So, this is their weakest track together, in my yeah. opinion, is not bad. I don't like it. Texas I don't know. I like Binks horizon. on the production. I like Drake's whispering, talking his shit. We all know the Louis V disc as well, and um, uh, I think that Pharrell, you know, he just. He caught a stray being with Pusha T. I mean, it just is what it is. Do I think that Drake hates Pusha? I mean, hates Pharrell? I don't think so. But if Pusha was gonna be in the it was if Pusha was gonna be in that LV show, then Drake was gonna have some shit to say about it. So I'm teed up right now. I think Mold is probably my worst track on here. You think it's your worst track? Yeah. I understand Drake's whispering, man. You know, get it. it like, bro, yeah, I also I don't can't. like this. I can't. Uh, it's pretty weird trying to act all tough, man. I can't deal with it, man. You don't like Drake <laughs> ASMR? Mandem <laughs> said this is the worst track, fam. Crazy. A lot. That's tough. That's oh, tough. Man. That is tough like, for real. I could bro. probably give it like the last minute. The beat switch up was cool, but yeah. Drake's I, just felt like it. I don't think it's the worst track. I think it's their worst track, personally. Damn. Man, wow. I'm actually so, kind of curious. What is y'all worst track on the album? Yeah, I think well, so so far for me, it's God's Country. Uh, Circus Maximus. It's a toss up between Del Resto and yeah, Circus Maximus. Down. You said Del oh, Resto is your worst track? It's a toss up between those two. And, and Fiend God's is Country? Fiend is a worst Fiend track. Fiend is fire, yo. But we'll talk about that later. See, I can put Fiend above. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, 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 it's between Mo and K. So some therapy shit. Yeah, act like you love this American wow. shit. Really I forgot K. Pop. This is the pu- they, look, these are these are real human beings talking from what they like and dislike. This is not me just talking. This is literally real human beings coming out of a computer speaker saying what they like and dislike. Get it a six. Yeah, just get it a six. Yeah. Your body got put in some work on the flute. Now you want to go and inherit the shit. I thought Don't this shit was fire. Boy by I thought the beat was dope. I love Drake's I love Drake's delivery. Once you get over the little whispering every once in a while, I love when the little trumpets and horns come in when Travis Parts comes in. Uh This part right here. I also love that part right there. That boom, 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 boom. Gets a little evil and shit. Sounds like some um, medieval time shit. Right here. Is you fucking crazy? Is you fucking crazy? And I, I've seen a lot of memes go around with like, is you fucking crazy? <laughs> Like, is you fucking crazy? <laughs> I wonder if he put that song on one of these concerts. You said what? I wonder if what? I wonder if he's put that song on uh, a set list of one of these concerts since he's touring right now. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about the set list after. We could definitely talk about the set list. Remind me. Hold on. Let me put set list on the board so I don't remember. Uh, set list and then Paracel. <laughs> Wait, you talking about set list of his four that he's doing right now? 
Yeah, of Drake. I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, right now, of like, not Drake, but I'm just saying what Travis is going to do because that's another question I had that I was wondering. Uh, I was well, pretty Drake. sure when he goes to Houston or if he's performing in Houston, I'm pretty sure he'll bring out Travis Scott. I'm pretty sure they'll perform the song. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Drake. I'm talking about Trav. Trav, when he does oh, it. Oh, Trav. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Trav, sorry. yeah, we're not talking about Drake, bro. Hey, well, you love you some Drake, bro. I ain't going to lie to you, fam. Hey, no, 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 no. Ew. Nah, bro. <laughs> I'm just no, playing. I mean, we're on the topic right now. <laughs> we're talking about Drake and Travis and this song, Meltdown. Just playing. So. I kid. I kid. I kid. All right. So, but yeah, we get the Meltdown. They, they, and that was the line right there that really caught me that. that I was like, okay, this song's fire. Turn up 11, keep this shit open like 7 11. Me at the house, I got 7 to heaven. They think I'm satanic, I keep me a reverend. They think I'm satanic, I keep me a reverend. <laughs> Who loves Drake? Oh, uh, War Warlock Trav literally said, They think I'm satanic, I keep me a reverend. Obviously, referencing Astro World. Literally, referencing Astro World. They think he's satanic. I keep me a reverend. <laughs> oh, man. But he's a warlock, apparently. That's why I always made the warlock. It's kind of funny. So when you get down to that, that's the line that really caught me off guard. And I was like, this shit is, is, an, is, a, is a great track and will probably be the uh, main hype track of his sets when he goes moving forward. All right. Now we get to the worst track on the album, uh, <laughs> which is Fiend. You think it's the worst track? I think it's the worst track on the album. Hands down. I think it's the worst track on the album. Again. I'm not a fan of I think it's... Who's calling you? It annoys me. I think... I think... I think it's the worst track on the album, but I think it's the most hype track on the album. Um, Did you hear the Shaq was verse that just got released? Um, I did not hear it. Um, I guess you can send it to me. We'll listen to it. Yeah, I got you. Send it to me in the chat. Fiend edited to have released Cardi verse and a Shaq wear verse and CD quality. Okay, make sure I hopefully I don't get banned. Baby, my face on the dotted line. I've been flying out of town for some peace of mind. It's like always, they just want a peace of mind. I've been hunting around. Like I'm on scenes. Playing both sides of the E-hole. Shout out fucking your friends. Wait, where does this verse start? He's after Cardi, but Cardi has a different verse too. Okay, okay. I've been going crazy, sir. I've been hitting deep in. She not hitting the scene. She's trying to go. Had to be hassling my hoes. Had to be dripping my hoes. Just holding out a loud shot. I got these hoes on their toes. It's so funny because Cardi, I feel like Futures, we said Futures never going to go away. But listen, Father Time tells all. And future sooner or later will go away, and I feel like Cardi gonna pick up right where future left because <laughs> he sounds just like future. I really thought this was some future shit when I first heard it. The bitch on the road, she trying to fuck on my old. I got this hoe with me, she trying to show me some. I got flows for days, you niggas ain't on none. Me and my bro like me, you know we on one. We ain't spike going crazy into the sun. You worried about that hoe? That hoe on shows up. Like I said, I can see this is literally the hype. This is the hype of song on the album. I will give it that. Again, Whenever I talk about shit, I always like to think of the masses as well. I'm not talking about just from my part. I'm saying that this is one of my least favorite tracks, if not the least favorite track from me. Um, the worst track on the album, however you want to say it. And But I can also acknowledge that this is going to be, this is the hypest track on the album. It will be part of his set going forward. They will get hyped to this um, set, uh, this track on festivals and whatever he uh, kind of concert venues he does. And... You know, this will be the track that gets everybody hyped. I, I get it. I understand exactly what it is for what it is. But again, I just don't like it. Period. You know, Deb be washing the dishes to this song for sure with them little hip swings. That's crazy. Show you when you're shaking, you only wanna meet. Racks on my mind, racks on my sneakers. Took her from the stage straight to the bleachers. Yeah, share with me while and when I'm on a beat. I'll bust her up and cut her off cause I don't need her. Yeah. 
matter, it's gon' burn, baby. I can't get invested, just my turn, baby. I jump off the roof and crash the turntables. The tables never turn, we got the scouts. I'ma make a fiend, we pull up, make a scene. First time I hold my team, been doing this shit since team. Scream, fiend, fiend, fiend. Okay, my bad. My, okay, 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 hold on. Okay, that's... <laughs> hey, that might be crazy. <laughs> hey, live Shaq West, bitch. I'm dying Shaq West, bitch. Hey, we need Shaq back in the game, bro. We need Shaq back in the game. I gotta tweet that. Hold on. That was crazy. Hold on. That was actually fucking insane. <laughs> I like how he used it. He was like, and I come with, with, with the fiend man, on the scene. Like, that was fire. I, I, I love when people, when artists use the ad lib to the song to their advantage or the hook, and then they use it and they put it for that one second, and then they go back and they switch it up. I love that part. Damn. Sheck, uh, let's see. Sheck West spazzed on this unreleased fiend. Put a little emoji on it. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm dedicated now. I got. I definitely just got to release the video for what it is, cause uh, they gonna clap me down. So, but that's it's crazy. Weird that, it's weird that it's on the vinyl. Not any, not any. So this basically, so Shex West verse did not make it to this album. Essentially, right? Like, it did not make it to this album. Nah, it's on the vinyl, but not the actual album. <laughs> wow, okay. So then it's actually legit then? Yeah, it's legit. I think uh, they said that his vocals didn't clear or something. Yeah, I love Sheck West. I love Sheck West for the energy. He's probably like my like my favorite energetic artist to listen to. But again, I can't get with the Cardi uh, deep voice. It don't sound like Cardi. Um, I just don't like the fiend, 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 fiend. You know, over and over again. But again, I can see when you're on drugs, drugged out at a festival and it's just playing, bass going crazy, it's loud, and you're just bobbing your head and going insane. I think that, you know, that's just exactly what it's meant for. Now, someone said they did not like Del Resto Echoes, which is crazy. We have diff we must have different ears. We really do must oh, have different me. ears, bro. Okay, so you said you didn't like it. Why why don't you like it? Like what's what's your reason for not liking this track? Well, if I'm if I'm being honest, I didn't really like uh renaissance by beyonce either and it's kind of had the same type of sound to it so i think it's just like i just don't really like that sound Do you like house Honestly. you don't like house music or anything like that like it depends certain house but i don't know i so, so, just so, wasn't so, a big fan so you're a specific house person correct yeah okay, i'm not okay. like the biggest house fan. okay so then that yeah oh, then you definitely a little bit of afrobeat vibes in that a little bit yeah for, um, for sure but i'm like if you don't like if you don't if you don't, if you only like specific house or just anything in that realm, then yeah, you're definitely not gonna like shit. Like it's just, it's just not. Yeah, for yeah. You. but but I understand why people like it. For it's sure, it's just not for me. The sounds are fun. You got look, everything going everywhere. The beats hitting, you know, the singing, the vocal, the vocality is insane. Like the build up to the track, like the. Was this one of the lead singles or no? Yeah, this was. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. They they released this as a single when the album drop, as a second single. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Well, Beyonce is a big name, so I mean that makes sense. Blood don't like gay unsa un music. <laughs> that I mean that's literally what it, that's what it comes down to. Honestly, like we're being very very honest. A lot of people don't like to associate with house music or kind of just that Madonna style. Like boo, I don't even know what you call it, but you know move to the music because they feel like it's gay. Really. Like when, I remember when, when Drake when Drake dropped honestly never mind everybody was like yo uh, everybody wants to get sassy and you know wave their paper remember when Drake had the fan he was listening to house music they wants to get sassy wave his fan and they want to be uh gay boys you know like that's literally what it comes down to like it's not it's not it's not masculine enough or oomph enough you know to be like you know to like oh I can't bang I can't bang this shit yeah you, know, you can definitely bang that shit bro like pause you know uh but I'm yeah, will it. Pauls again, bro. That's crazy. But we gonna we gonna what? listen. To, we gonna listen to Del Resto. Yeah, we gonna listen for a little bit. Nah, this shit's crazy. In the car, cause my speakers aren't doing it justice. What's that, Destroy Lonely? But in the car, 
this shit hits crazy. Tiller PV, man. Thank you for the T1 sub as well, man. Oh, let me give you the Discord, bro, because you've been sub for like Say something in the chat, Tiller. If you in. But this song is crazy. Like this part right here. I just love the drowsiness of the track. It's very trancey, like puts you in a trance. And then you hear the cowbell in the background. That thong, thong. Like it's just, oh man. It's, I think I think psychedelic, just like very hip hypnotizing trav. That's one of my, you know, Impossible is my favorite trav track. So, you know, whenever I can get into a kind of just um psyched out trav just trav that's just in a fucking zone like this like i'm always gonna enjoy that side of trav you know like this shit goes crazy cowboy hit in the background the only part i didn't like about the song is this part right here i definitely would have used a different sound there but in the car though, in the car though, that 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 sound does sound. It sounds very enhanced in the car. But my speakers, that shit sound like shit. Yeah. Definitely thought that this was was. Uh, I thought that this was what Utopia was gonna sound like, between Mexican space cartel music. And then kind of just like this, when I heard K-pop, I was like, okay, well, this is exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get like a album where he's traveling the world and he's going to do outer space shit. You know, very kind of just like, um, who did an outer space kind of theme album? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, remember when uh, Lupe Fiasco did Lasers? Very, uh, very blah album, but very good album as well. But um, kind of like that, like that future, future sounds, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Um, this song felt like blue balling. What? <laughs> I, I don't get, I don't understand the correlation. Um, graduation, yeah, graduation had a lot of space. Yeah, graduation also was a very um, utopia ish kind of sound because that sounds like some um, celebration is a perfect example of what a utopia song could uh, what I what I envisioned what utopia was going to be because when I listen to celebration, that sounds like you're going to take off into some outer space. You know, bear world that this nigga Kanye had a vision of and shit. Um, moon on man, <laughs> I said moon on man. Oh man. Um, pause. Yeah. No moon on man. How's that pause? Come on, man. You can't be just saying it. you're not gonna use it, right? Because the moon is an ass and the ass is on a man. Come on now. Yo, that's that's a push, bro. What are you Wait, talking whoa. about? What? <laughs> Y'all might send you to the Discord gulag, bro. That's what are you talking about, bro? And <laughs> uh, then we get you to the track. Me to explain it. <laughs> okay, okay, you you got it, bro. You got it. Uh, but then you get to track ten. This man said, "Moon, how the hell, moon and ass." <laughs> Nigga said, "A moon and ass." Nigga, it's horny. <laughs> What is he talking about, bro? Oh, man. And then we get to track 10, which is I Know. And I think that this track this track is is a very, very late night track. Like, this is that, like, this is very, tra this, this is a, the most Trav-esque track you can get right here. Like, like, this is that. It's that late. This is literally the late night right here. Then again, I can be drunk. Reminded me a lot of This is literally the most Trav esque track you can get. Like this is Trav to this is Trav. Like this is what Trav was known for. Um, this is so crazy. Then again, I can be drunk. Hey. I know, mommy, I know. It's two a.m. No stress. Two, three, that bullshit kick in. And third, you feel your best. Ain't that bitch 
go crazy. This is the bro. This is my top five. Like this, this one right here is in my top five. Like I listened to this on a late night drive the other night, man, and I was like, yo, like this shit took me on a fucking journey. Like this track is crazy. It was very Cuddy esque. You feel? Yeah, I, I, I can see. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Very Cuddy esque. But I'm saying that's that. But Trav took a lot of influence from Cuddy as well, and and that's where I felt like it, it, it delivered right there. Like it felt like it was like more of kind of like the rodeo, more of kind of, yeah. kind of just like you know, just like days before rodeo. Like this is what Trav was kind of bringing that like psychedelic. Again, remember we were talking about. You know, everybody likes to say ASAP Rocky and, and then Trav stole ASAP Rocky shit because he does the psychedelic shit and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I can see it sometimes. You know, speaking of ASAP Rocky, I got to upload that video. But I can see it sometimes. I get it. But I'm just saying, but, though, like, Moon Man 2. Yeah, Moon Man 2. But, yeah, I the like piano, this track. The piano reminded me of Heaven on Earth by Cuddy. Okay. No, okay. That's a, I like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a little horn for that, even though you said some crazy shit earlier. You know. I, I you told it. me to explain myself. So <laughs> like, I, just, oh. I was just trying to understand the assignment. Man said moon butt too is great. <laughs> man said moon butt too. <laughs> butt man. <laughs> man on the butt. <laughs> uh, track 11 is uh, Topio Twins, which I thought this Twin track. Bitches. Twin bitches. Twin bitches. How do y'all feel about this track? Yeah. Who had the best uh, verse on this track? I think this is the most basic track on the album, in my opinion. For sure, definitely belongs on Astro World. Who's the best? Who's the best feature on, or the best verse on this track? Twenty one, Raw forty nine, or Travi. Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah, I say twenty one too. Y'all say Trav. Trav's last verse. I, I still say twenty one. This is the track. This, this is wait. This is the track. No, this is not the track. Schizo is what I want to talk about after that because I got a lot of stuff to talk about with Schizo. But we get here, man. Like twin glock, twin jet, twin. Try the planes. I don't ride prop. Slow stroke. Yeah. Perfect. Front of back. I be Perfect. drinking walk. S rays. Cat scans. Nigga, ask my op. Ten bad bitches in the studio. They all prop. Perfect. Treat them niggas like rhythmic radio. They all pop. Should have got some lipo. She got shots. Now her ass drop. Slime sitting in a cell. I bet he coming home like pop. Oh God. Perfect. She give me wet mouth. I need a mop. I don't want that clean head, little bitch. I want that slop. Twenty one. She can't. <laughs> <laughs> I want that clean head, bitch. I want that slop. <laughs> that boy 21 was slime, boy. Oh, man. That's crazy. Chris, close your mic. But, um, uh, yeah, that was crazy, man. That, 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 I love that track right there. I like, I thought 21 Savage had the best verse. Uh, I think that Rob 49, I thought that was NBA Youngboy. You know, again, I, that Louisiana style rap for sometimes is not for me. Sometimes it does hit, but I think that 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 Topia Twins is not a bad track. You gotta have some hype on the album, and that's a, you know, again, a lot of variety. I get it. You gotta have some hype on the album. This is one of those hype tracks. I'm not mad at it. Three three verses. Uh, Raw Forty Nine is my least favorite verse on the track, but it's not bad to the point where I want to be like, mm, you know, I I did when I first heard it. I kind of gave it a little bit of, you know. Ugh, like I don't want to really hear this kind of NBA young boy because I thought it was NBA young boy style, but after you listen to a couple, Raw Forty Nine hit it, hit it on the T or hit on the nail, and I'm um, also congrats to him on the XXL uh, making the list as well. Now we get to the next track, Circus Maximus. I under, like if you if you skip Murph's if you skip this track, I'm not mad at you. Like if you skip this track. He said, nah, he dead ass sound like he finished a three hour interview with Bobby. <laughs> yo, I can't believe these niggas gave me shit about Bobby, bro, because I sat here and did not enjoy that shit. They were like, yo, Dave, if you're not going to react to it, then you should never even uploaded it. Oh, my God, bro. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, yo, this is not a reaction. You didn't put it on YouTube. You thought that was a good idea, man. Just click the X button, bro. It's literally that easy. Not gonna lie, this track is very forgettable. And for it to have the weekend on it, that was actually what's wild about it too. Like, for it to have the weekend on it and Sway Lee, you know, Sway Lee usually does his thing on hooks. And we always said Sway Lee does great on Travis albums. 
and I feel like this is the first miss. Like not it's it's not a bad track. I just it just does nothing. It's just there. It's like filler, bro. It's Zompak Toes wearing wearing bikinis. Is it good filler though? <laughs> it feels very filler. If filler was a filler and filler was a song and song was named filler, then this would be song. This reminds me reminds me of a of a Kanye track. I'm trying to Uh talking about thing Love Lockdown. No, Travis and no Goldstein produced that song. Travis between my people Twisted Dog Fantasy or Jesus. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to look for it because it reminds me of a freaking track that Kanye. Are you talking about the drum drums? Yeah. Black skinhead. Oh yeah, black skinhead. Yeah, black skinhead. There you go. It's crazy. It's supposed to be like the. Yeah, like I just, but I thought I thought this track was just very filler. Like I thought that it was definitely there could have been more creativity, especially from what we already got on the first previous eleven tracks. I just thought that this track was kind of just there, and it was highly disappointing for it to be the weekend and sway, and to not have a lot of soul or have not have a lot of melodies into it. And I just thought that you know it was it was it was just straight filler, man. It's it's not a bad track. It's just a skip, you know. No disrespect. It's just, it's, and my it's, issue with it was there was really no change up besides like the weekend having, you know, singing in the middle and yeah. stuff. Like Travis's parts, there was really no change up throughout the whole. Even with the weekend, I still didn't think it suited him. I, I think if he was off this track, he would have been better. Okay, I can see that. I can agree with that actually. Even if it was a prototype, it doesn't do much for that album. Um... Uh, like my like my fucking ass. A light skin head is crazy. <laughs> light skin. <laughs> oh man! And then we get to my second favorite favorite track on the album, which was Paracel. I will actually let this play the whole way through. Um, oh, actually, I'm gonna let this bitch play slow because fuck that. Dude. If you guys have not heard the slow Paracel, you guys already heard the fast Paracel. So, but if you guys have not heard of the slow Paracel, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you guys on right now, man. This is the link right here. Um. What do you mean join Twitch? The fuck? Hold on real quick. Shit, log me on my goddamn Twitch, bro. Yeah. Hey, um. All right, there we go. My bad, my bad. All right. But then this song right here, for me, this is like the most personal song on the album. Like when you really I hear what he's saying, like Dave Chappelle, Young Lee, like I stand tall. Like I, I just connected everything to the astral world because the man was at his peak, at his, at his like the height of his career, bro. I don't think we we forget about it so fast, but Travis Scott was taking the world by storm, like between his shoes, between his merch, his albums, his music, his festivals. Travis Scott was 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 becoming a god, you know, and to, for all that just to be taken away from him. And when you hear this track, just from the words, and if it's very psychedelic, it captures you the way the melodies just capture you. The way, you know, it just it just if you listen to it and you feel it, it's crazy, man. Like I get up, I fall, I fall. Get up. I get up. I fall. I get up. I stand tall. I stand tall. Run parasail. Rolling through the grass. Chains on the trees. Looking through a glass. Punching by the bushes. Waiting on the breeze. This shit crazy. Make it last. My 
my god, this shit crazy. Success comes so easy for you to Travis Scott. They're waiting behind. You know, he's talking about right reference. They're waiting behind. Success comes so easy. They're waiting behind to take that shit away. This song's like very self-reflective, bro. Like, it's so crazy, though. Like, I choose to feel free. I choose to feel free. I forgive myself. I choose to feel free. A lot of people can't say that in this world now because if you dis, you, if you say anything in this world, somebody just told me I'm like a a a, a, a red pill, a red pill person. I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what? They talking about on Twitter. Yeah, I'm like, what does that mean, bro? Like, yeah, red... I saw that. Oh, they said that you you went went red pill. I went red pill. Like, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I'm so out of touch with shit like that, bro. I'm just living, bro. Like, and you're just a red pill. I'm like, what is a red pill? Talking about the Matrix? Have you even seen the Matrix? <laughs> like, talking like, about like Andrew Tate and talking about the Matrix red pill. Yeah, masculinity, all that stuff is. Well, I mean, it's from the Matrix. A red pill, blue pill is from the Matrix. I didn't know yeah, it was an Andrew Tate yeah, thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought it back. <laughs> he brought it Andrew back. So, Tate, so, so, Nico. Okay, so now all the kids are literally just starting spewing out red pill, blue pill. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's kind <laughs> of like it's crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> I feel like if they're calling you red pill, they mean like you believe everything you see. But I, I feel like that's the opposite. Like. Of yeah, you, it's, you know what I mean. Is, um, that's basically what you just said. Oh, okay. Red, red pill is like against it, and but basically. So blue pill mm. is with it, and red pill is against it. Yeah. Just like in the movies, yeah. Red pill is against. Basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know why they link that shit together. I don't know. Why. I mean, I mean, the Matrix is very, very intricate if you really pay attention to it. But still, though, it's like. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> and that's the shit, that's exactly the shit I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. In, anyways, like, feel free. Like this song, it's see the thing is the song is surface level. I agree, the lyrics are surface level, but it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. I can literally say, "Bad, bad, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, man. Yes, man. Three bags full." Another person can be like, "Bad, bad, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir." Yes, sir. Three bags. Ooh. So I was about to say, damn, both that, people were crazy. That's that's crazy, and it hit. It's different. Like, oh shit! What's that? What's that? Patty Labelle dev, yeah. Like I, I, I really do feel that the three bags full. You feel me? Like that's the difference. But people don't understand. Shit can be surface level. But it's about how you say it. I will fight for everything I love. I will fight for everything I love. Come on. Forever. Forever. When you put those words and I will love everything I fight for. into perspective. Forever. And that also could be about Kylie as too as well, because y'all just said Kylie cheated on him and he mentioned her in my eyes or in uh on on the eyes track, eyes on me. So again, like this is this is a crazy track, bro. Like I, I really do fuck with this this track. I fuck with 
you know, the subliminals, you take it how you want to take it. That's the beautiful thing about music, too, because sometimes you can add your own meaning, find out what's a different meaning later. And that's why hip hop is what it is when you find out. Because, like, wow, it was a different meaning, but I always thought it was this. And it is this. Oh, shit. Like, you come up with different shit. That's what the beautiful. That's why I love Lupe Fiasco. And so, like, you hear that shit. And like Men on the Moon. Yeah, shit like that. Yeah, exactly. God damn. What? You still on that one? <laughs> so. Yeah, man, that's I, I love that track, man. Now we get into the most rapping, rapping track. Well, I'll probably put this under like an interlude, on honestly. Yeah, Paracel is an interlude because it's just as long as if y'all said God Country is an interlude, then Paracel's only two minutes long as well. Um, Yo, Schizo has the best switch up. So, so Schizo for me, Schizo's first. <laughs> so Schizo's first switch up, I loved so much. The second verse. The, no, the third verse I hate it. The fourth verse I love. If you would have just shortened this shit down, this shit would have been one of the. This shit would have been Travis Scott's best rap track, hands down. Like, hands Wait, down. the part, the part where like he he starts screaming and it kind of like cuts out, um, kind of like tripping out. Are you talking about that drop? Or? Uh, I'm talking about. Okay, so we'll go through the drops right now. Hold on. So this this shit right here with the hi hats. This shit with the hats is crazy. Travis Scott rapping. I thought this shit was crazy. And then try and then Thug. I thought this was probably one of Thug's best raps in a in a while. Like I don't know when they made this shit, but this is the best I've heard Thug in a while. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And then he switched the beat right here. Oh my god. This this first beat switch is crazy. Did he say, oh yeah, did, did everybody said do that dev? I got I gotta make that into a uh, do that dev. Do that dev. <laughs> do that dev. Do that dev. Do that dev. Late at night at home, get ratchet. Can you do that dev? Told you I'ma be right back as long as do that dev. Pity me, I'm moving night when they really can't see me. I ran it back last time, but it ain't last time. I love that. I love it. But right here? You said make that my Twitter? Alright, I'm gonna make that my Twitter right now. Hold on. Alright, hold on. I got Miami Sensei. Hold on. New name. Do that dev. Do that dev. Inspire by. All right. But yeah. And then this part right here, though, bro. Like. Wait, I mean, make that your ex. I thought this was the best beat switch on the, on the track, right here. This this part right here. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Man, this beat switch is crazy. Without going deep, Shakespeare took the squad, brought the play right here, got the vision, and I made. And I like this. Long, not no extensions. Rock the bow with ice so expensive. Hair long, not no extensions. Money long, shit is extended. She need me now, she need me a pendant. I said you need but then, me, she hit it. But this part right here. You need me. Like, I didn't like this beat switch. But I like the verse. To the cold, binary like I 
That's my favorite part of the song. I did not like that beat switch. Like, I didn't like the transition. Is that fuck me? Yeah, yeah I fucked with it. You fucked with it. Y'all fucked with it. I like those transitions. So y'all yeah, love like that transition. I'm messing with this track. So y'all think that transition is better than the first one? Yeah, I think it's I the same thing. You think I it's better than the... All right, all right. I like, the, I like all, right. all the transitions pretty equally. Mm. Okay, okay. Like, I, well, I imagine, like, in, in a concert, that, that screaming part, that would go crazy. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then I didn't like this. Uh, this last verse is fire. This last verse is fire from Trap. Probably one of Trap's best verses today. I'm loyal, bitch. I got yay over bite it. I let the shit go off the top. Yeah, no typing. I go from overlook to these niggas is overbiting. I'm so these niggas is overbiting. Ooh, okay. I see you try that little word play on you, boy. They said he wasn't a rapper, but he is a rapper. All right. Then we get to the song that I I, I love this. This is my top five. Um, I'm I'm spoiling it for a video, but it's okay. This is my top five. This is a long ass fucking thing. They're gonna be mad at me, but this is my top five right here. Schizo. Um, these niggas is overbiting how I'm in their ear. I'm enticing. Oh, damn! I just see. That. Oh, that's. I didn't catch that one. I didn't catch that one. Sheesh! I didn't catch that one. <laughs> that's fire. And then we get to the next song, which I feel like is also just one of the. This just sounds just so creepy, bro. Like, oh my god. Forever. Lost on Alice, driven in both cars. Just bring your girl, feel like she both fires. Young black nigga worked at the oceans. So, how we here trapped on the ocean? About to go up a level of disrespectful. I'm just one chain away from going heavy metal. Ooh. I'm just one angel away from blocking out the devil. Yo. Just one mountain away from me on my rebel. Too Yo. much power, too many hours. All in a day, I sent the food. Hey, that was mama forever. And then I thought the beat switch when Westside came in. Oh my goodness. She jump up, bounce back like trembling. Yeah, fire, bro. Hey, yo, whip the cocaine to the pop bus. You was on the porch, I was locked up. Two tone made back truck with the Maxwell. Think a nigga shot something. Put it to your face, watch some more football blow. Say, told a different color face on the road. Sitting on his head, he be dead by the morning. I like this. Yeah. I guess West Side Gun or Benny the Butcher because those are the two kind of just boom bap rappers that we have nowadays, you know, that are just as popular to be on a Travis Scott album. Um, I got it right. A lot of people tried to question my integrity. I was like, come on, man, be real. Like, let's be real. Um, but I felt like from Paracel on. This was my favorite part of the album. Track 13 through 19, uh, six bangers, seven bangers. I thought this was the best part of the album. I think it just ended so amazing. Love. I thought this track was amazing, too. Like, this track gave me... This track showed me that Cuddy still has it. Cuddy still has still has it in him to be that... To still be Cuddalicious. To still be Cuddy. You know, to still be that man on the moon. You know, as as the homeboy would say in here, you know? So, I'm the, so so when you hear tracks like this, it it still shows that Cuddy just needs Metamorphosis was ass. It still shows that Cuddy just needs the beats, and I don't know what's his beat selection lately been like, but this track right here, um, man. Like, I I love this track so much. Bro. This track is so fucking fire. Very evil, gritty, you know, uh, just like the sounds, my god, like they give me they give me love, they love the sky. They love how to this rock, they love in the jock. The watch how they got spike. Like this one is for sure another another yes. Another Yeezus inspired or maybe it's like this is what well, this is what Trav had in his back pocket the whole time. Who knows, you know? 
But well, this is the one from the Twitter. Oh, this is the one. Divine. Oh, this yeah, is, from yeah. Vine. Also, oh, this is the one that, as I was saying, this is the one that Trav basically just had this shit in the back pocket, you know, like. And then you get here, like. I do feel like it fits the vibe of the album. The night is young and the love in the air hit me. Follow all the vibes of an every city. Gamble with your life. Think about it. It's funny too, cause you guys said this is 2014, so right, the vine was 2014. So this is 2014, Cuddy. This is like Pete Cuddy right here, like. I think as a, as a long time Cuddy fan, and I love this track by the way. Again, there's only one track that misses on the album for me. Two tracks actually: Circus Maximus and. Uh, and Fiend. Fiend. Fiend is the track. I just don't like Fiend. Like, I just don't like it. I mean, I get it if people like it, but I don't like it. And so, like, now we get to um, this track right here. And the problem with Cuddy is... Damn, I sound like Sean right there. The problem with Cuddy is just... He needs to do what he's been doing. There's no reason... Cuddy doesn't need to evolve into anything... Because he was the influence. Cuddy is someone who was an innovator. He was the creator. Uh, God Country is literally the shit. It's fire. Um, in the car. Um, Cuddy does not need to push any boundaries, push anything. He needs to do exactly what Larry June does. He needs to do exactly what Currency does. He needs to do exactly what Wiz Khalifa does. Like He's already stapled in hip-hop, stapled in his career. Just with his fan base of what he's done. You know, he doesn't need to do anything to prove to anybody. Because Cuddy has his fan base that pushes him. You know, his sound was already pushed. And I think that's the problem. Every like, I don't know if Cuddy feels like he needs to push that agenda. Or he needs to push, you know, that I'm going to be this, this newborn flame. Like, he does not need to do that. And it just puts a lot of unnecessary pressure on someone who's already established in the game. Especially Cuddy. Like, I know Cuddy doesn't do the numbers like the big artists, but his following is insane for whatever he does. And if he continues to make stuff like Swim in the Light, you know, Passion Pain, Demon Slam, even Man on the Moon 3, as much as I did not enjoy it as the other ones, and for it to be a Man on the Moon, my true Man on the Moon 3 is Passion Pain, Demon Slam. But for it to even, you know, Passion Pain was even somewhat good like it wasn't it wasn't a bad album like it was but i feel like this new shit he's been dropping recently has just been very it's been very nah like it just feels something different about cuddy it feels like more of an angry cuddy um rather than just a cuddy who's you know bringing that positive fun aura that he's always had about him and even the sad depressed aura you know like that he's always had about him that he can speak to the masses you know, he was the ex, the juice world before those those two were things. You know what I'm saying? Like he was the sad sad boys ambassador type shit. So I don't know, man. I just wish Cuddy would just keep doing shit like that. So I feel like Cuddy drops now to shut haters up instead of wanting to actually do it. Exactly. You know what? Um Intergalactic was a great album. It was it was it was I. Right. Yeah, it was I. Right. But it it didn't have that feel like the previous the previous album did, you know? And then the track that everybody hates for whatever fucking reason. So do y'all like K-pop? I do. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, nah, I don't like. Nah, it. I think yeah, it I more. I, I think it fits more on the album than people think. I like Bad Bunny on it. I, I don't like. Uh, I don't think it fits on the I album at all. But I like the song. I mean, it doesn't fit into the album, but I definitely bump to it. I'll. De it's like a song like you definitely can bump to it like on the way out, you know, going out somewhere. Yeah, for sure. I like the album. I'm uh, the song. I'm Hispanic, so I get a bias, but I like it. I think just people hear that sound and they immediately just get turned off from it because they just want hip hop. But it's nah, not that's really... not my issue with the song. I, I'm, I'm Hispanic too. I, I like Bad Bunny and everything. Um, I just don't like Travis on it personally. I don't like Bad Bunny, but I do bump to to his part. So. Who had the best verse on the album on on, on the song? Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. And then, yeah. and, and then who's after Bad Bunny? 
The weekend. The weekend. Yeah. The weekend. So. so you think Travis shit was as bad, right? Okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm the same way. On that song. On that song. I'm the same way. I think that the weekends feature. I actually like the weekends feature just as much as I like Bad Bunny on there. Um, I felt like that was a lot of Astro World though, where Travis wasn't the shining moment in a lot of the songs of that album. Yeah, it's still yeah. a great album, but okay, okay, I, I can I can agree with that. I definitely feel like you know a lot of people said you know, you know it um had an Astro World just kind of just getting overrided by his features and you know they were I, I saw some conversations about that so. Uh, but I, I love this track. I think that I think I'm not mad at this too. I think Travis did very well on a track like this. It, sh it shows that he can actually do like some kind of soca shit, some 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 things like that, just to try some different shit. Um, you know, it gave me when when Utopia first released. I thought you know this being the single, I thought that you know kind of gave you a picture of what he was speaking on because by definition, Utopia is the perfect ecosystem, the perfect world. Um, it's it's. And, and for him to kind of travel in these places on this trailer and for him to be K-pop and then, again, but ketamine pop, again, while well, a track does have to have meaning, it doesn't always have to have meaning, but it's okay to have some meaning behind it. But for the track to be ketamine pop, it was like, okay, like now we're taking drugs, but you do take drugs to go to space. So, I mean, not literally, but technically. <laughs> like, like, I didn't even know it stood for that. Yeah, K-pop is ketamine pop, yeah. Not Korean. Ketamine pop. So it's drugs. I like that part right there. I like that part right there. And then I like. I thought The Weeknd did great. I mean, I thought The Weeknd, this was like right in The Weeknd's lane. I did not like The Weeknd on Circus Maximus, but I thought The Weeknd right here was fucking amazing. Like... Like this is this is this is like weekend s right here. Like this is what the weekend does. Rolling my face off, you know I'm high off that K-pop, ketamine pop. Yeah. And then he gets the bad bunny right here. Hold on. Oh. 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 Yo. 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 Nah, this track's fire, bro. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about, bro. Like, this shit around me, like, this, like, he did it on trance. I think Travis did just enough to do what he does. Um, obviously, a feature, when you have two singers, they're going to overpower someone who's trying to sing rap. At least Travis went first, and then Travis also ended it with the with the. I thought that was cool. Now we get to the last two tracks though. Um, telekinesis is probably everybody's favorite track. I think that I've seen like a majority of people say telekinesis is their favorite. Uh, I'm not mad at that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I think the album ended. Like I said, I think the album ended amazing. Um, I think Future just always has the best feature for some reason. Like he just always does his thing. He always gets the best beat selection for his features. Like they just be like, "Yo, we want Future on the best beat." You know what I'm saying? Like, and just preach for these bands, and I know I'm due for a big knowledge. And but I can see the future. I can see the future. I can see the future. It's looking. Like this right here. Oh my god! This shit. The drums with that fucking meow, whatever that sound is. I don't even know what the fuck you call that. What, what do you call that? What sound is that? No, I have no idea. I was oh, okay. just yeah. Like that shit is crazy. Like. But the, everybody knows the highlight of the song though is is Scissor. You 
you see the future is a sparkle in your eye When you all up on my thigh, can't let you Niggas playing my demise, I got murder on my mind I got money on the line, I can't lose If I try, let no I think that she was just the perfect voice to put on it I think Summer Walker also would have been very great to have on that um, ending um, I'm trying to think about a couple artists like Summer Walker um, SZA uh, Or Lennox I, I uh Ari Ari's more soul. I I she gotta get on them oh, soul. Oh saying, saying singer. Oh no no, no. I, there's a lot of singers that are great singers, but you gotta like have like that kind of style. Like, I think the SZA sure. um SZA uh Summer. Nah, I wouldn't put Janae on there. Her I think her would have yeah, her would have been great on there as well. Yeah. I can't see uh, summer on this. No. I think that like you can't see SZA summer on, on this. It. I could definitely see summer on this. Yeah, I can see some. I, could I think having SZA on it have, had like SZA has the strongest effect though. Like out of anybody her, her you could choose, like it's SZA's the best option for the for for that part of the song. Yeah, her but just, rapping she used uh, Drake's uh, Marvin's Room Flow. Is that what everybody came to? <laughs> You guys are the experts of the hip hop world, so I'm literally just be here. I just be listening to music, but Marvin. So they use Marvin, Marvin's room flow. No. Her, her, uh, her flow on this track, like w- during a certain portion, she, she, it was basically Drake on Marvin's room. You'll hear it. Okay, so for like four bars. Break my stride. Chose and I'm going to bet on me. Chose and all my shit and teeth. Chose and I can't feel no heat. Diamonds dancing on me. You started to first me. You fell out of pocket. You fucked that girl that you met at the party. I got some new niggas down in the lobby. How can I sleep with you? How can you body that still want to be with you? Trust me, I know that's insane. I'd rather fuck on you than fuck on me. Yeah, that is definitely that is definitely Marvin's room. Okay, sources trust me. Uh, I do trust. I tr- I do trust the sources. I did some shit in Berlin, my mold day. We both think shit and it's working for me. Working for me. Yeah, see, y'all say Janae though, but like I say, I just say Summer because Summer raps. She be rapping her ass off, like, and the way she does it, like, as much as I love SZA, I've I've come to love Summer more. I think SZA's a shit. I can't even say SZA's a better singer. I don't. I don't know. Like, cause Summer be singing her ass. I've listened to all Summer's albums, and she be singing her. And Summer be singing her ass off. Like, like. Um, SZA was great though. I, I like. I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to like knock it down. I'm just saying SZA. I mean, Summer could have did great on here too. You know, like. Yeah. I can see the future. I can see the future. Cause summer really do be cheating on niggas and getting pregnant and then going back to her toxic dude and getting tatted and then like she like summer literally summer literally lives it. It's one thing when you can sing about it and but there's one thing when you experience and then sing about it. It's a different pain. It come from a different it, it come from a different inside. You know, like <laughs> like summer gets cheated on and then cheats on her dudes and then gets dudes tatted names on her and then gets cheated on and then. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but now we get to the last track, which is my favorite on the album. Um, we'll let this ride out as I talk. Um, I think this, this is the best song on the album. It, it reminds me of Impossible. It's the most trancy song on the album. It takes me to a, a very quiet, dark place. Uh, I just love the production. I love James on it. Um, it's, it's, it's just an amazing track, bro. Metro on it. It's just so. It's, this track, I know everybody loves Telekinesis. And the, the, the thing that sucked about it is because Telekinesis is such a fire track that not a lot of people are talking about this track. Like, no, no one's talking about this track as much as I think think they should be talking about it because telekinesis was just so fucking good and they just got done off that scissor high and so we get to this amazing track and everybody's already just like they they're so fucking fired up from the last track and you know they're just like yo this, but this one is is Come off in the heat. this is we don't have to lie we don't have to lie right here. it's all right Yo, 
Yeah, this whole production on this track, bro. My mama is... always told me put yourself first. I, I ain't gonna lie, I love 21, but we gotta skip his verse. But it's wrong. Yeah, I was gonna ask how you felt about his verse. I love, I love, I love 21's verse. I don't skip it in the car, but I'm just saying for this purpose right now. Like if you like when you hear Travis come in with the phantom voice with the phantom hums, he just gives it this real like eerie presence, man. This shit's so crazy, bro. Oh my god, it's so good. You know the love is X-rated. This how we made it. Drinking her balance of patience. Watch how you take it. Can't keep no bitches, it's too dangerous. A big that's rated. Took everything up for the taking. I couldn't save it. See red and blues, I hit the pavement. Got low, got vacant. She needed angles, I need angels. I'm fighting Satan. Leave me faded, I feel painless. I go out gracious. I'm trying to feel the shade of greatness. I celebrate it. Bring entertainment. Go on brainless. Like going down on my haters. All right, all right, all right. All right. Take a sip, I've been going off the rip. I've been bumping more cold, play the world, go to shit. I'm I'm fucking So she never let her in. Always knew she always on one, and I can bear it. Come on. This song so fucking crazy. This song is fucking amazing. It's my favorite song on the album. Hands down. This song could also have been on Astro World. If we're talking about like straight themes. That shit's crazy, man. But like overall, man, the album is is a masterpiece. And in, in terms of what Travis did, I feel like it's just more Travis. It's a more personal album. It's 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 definitely his most. I mean, if you look at his his discography, it's Astro World, Birds in the Trap, Rodeo, you know, even DBR, you know, Al Faro. Like this is what, and it's funny too because since we got that vine of twenty fourteen. Basically, it was made in 2014. You know, sometimes, sometimes people don't see the business side of stuff. You know, some some people are very business savvy, and it's essentially like, you know, even like a, if you wanted to put it into a YouTube perspective, bro, you could you could become so big on YouTube, right, by doing a certain niche, niche. Did I say it right? Niche by doing a certain niche. Whether you're baking eggs every every video, whether you're reacting to videos, whether you're a basketball YouTuber, whether you're a flower plot a flower, flower pot planter YouTuber, right? And then what you do is you use that video as much as it sucks, and you want to use that video to keep making bigger plants, or maybe you want to start being a cook instead of being a plant maker. You use that plant making to get big enough to then where you can do anything what the fuck you want to do on youtube example someone like kai or someone like flight or someone like z is them you, when you get so big on youtube it doesn't matter what you do you can sit there for five hours and just because you have the following you have 
you can do anything you want because no one now can tell you shit. So the same thing for Travis Scott in comparison. You know, he had to to release those albums before he can get off his experimental shit, before he could get off his, you know, grittiness shit, before he could get off shit like this because maybe he had to be more and more popular. Maybe he wanted to get to a peak popular point where he wanted to. Now he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Now, again, somebody's like, he was already a millionaire when he dropped Rodeo. He was already a millionaire. Yeah, but some people want to be multi-millionaires. Some people want to be fucking billionaires. Maybe he had a different vision. And so when I look at it like this, man, I just feel like for him to have a lot of these songs in the chamber already and to release this shit, again, he's also a very perfectionist person, and he wants creative control of his content. And so maybe he waited on a lot of this to kind of polish it up and deliver it to not, you know, you know, he had a lot of people listening to the album, different listeners to give their opinions. Again, you can't have yes men around you when you want to make good quality music. I always preach that. And so when you have different listeners, a different variety of listeners, different people coming together, I'm like, yo, you like this, you like this, you like this. And, you know, for him to have a, you know, being a producer kind of first to have an ear for sounds, which I feel like a lot of producer turned rappers do very well in the rap game because they know it sounds good, even if the, because not about what you say, it's about how you say it. I think that this album just all around has something for everybody and it hits all points. Um, 19 tracks, again, a little bit long for me. I would always complain about it. But when you have variety, you can do shit like this. You get a pass with it. When you're not, you know, for 25 tracks. You know, then no one's really going to complain about the length of your album. Um, I just think that this album is going to age just crazy. You know, when people get on the train and start fucking realizing, like, this shit is crazy. Like, start enjoying it. Like, insane. like there's a reason why people are, are praising this. It's not because, you know, they, they're praising this because they love the album. It sounds good. A lot of people are coming together because they love the album. They like the songs. The songs sound great where they're sharing it. Everybody around the world is sharing these songs that sound great. You know, so I just think that this album, with only one to two misses for me, you know, and even those misses being kind of tracks that I'm just like, uh, I understand what they are. Everybody loves them. I'm just objectively not a fan of it. And I think that, yeah, I, I don't see an album beating this. It would have to be something crazy. Uh, it's just man, like I, I I love this track from the hyena all the way to the end, like, till till further notice. Like it's dead dead ass. Like fifteen minutes of cool shit. Then it just feels like Travis ran out of money. I don't want to spoil. Oh, you talking about the movies now? All right. Um. Yeah. So I mean, we'll see though. This is how I feel about it, man. Like nine out of ten, I, my statement stands. I, I I stand firm on that on how I feel about it. That and nine out of ten is is literally what I'm gonna stick to, and I'm not I'm not getting away from it. So, uh, I'm sorry that this was such a long. Sorry that this was such a long, uh, final, 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 final talks video, final listen. But I'm glad I got to do it with my subscribers, and um, we got to chill. You guys got at least another kind of voice. A few people giving you guys a different side of what they feel and what they liked. I give you a little bit different from my opinions just to show that I'm not talking to other people like what they like and dislike what they do dislike. But I just think that uh, this album is, 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 is dope. And I love the features on it. I love the flow of it. I love the sounds of it. I love the direction of it. And I hope Travis continues to do shit like this because this is amazing. You know, He's always had a creative, you know, a very creative way of turning his visions into music you know it's, it's just amazing how he just does it and yeah that's how i feel about that travis needs to drop the deluxe that's crazy anyways youtube this boy dev don't forget to like comment subscribe all that good stuff follow my social here and uh till the next time we are out twitch gang stay here uh i will upload the full video to youtube so don't even worry about that you guys are getting the full video um and that's about it yeah now we're about to watch the fiend reactions i want to see all the fiend reactions to all my homies what they did so till next time man, we're out love y'all Peace.